Hello and welcome to Monday Night Football Player Props video. I am your host, Matthew Amato for Limes.com. Joined here by Jacob Wayne. We got the San Francisco 49ers at Arizona Cardinals. We're having to record this one a lot later than we normally do. So we got Jacob live from outside, I guess, technically. Uh, Location shit, man. Location shit. Yeah. Uh, well, we finally got some props posted this morning. Um, so got to take a look at those. Um, anything jumping out of you? early on i mean for me it's it's really tough i feel like i'm getting trapped with the christian mccaffrey rushing yards we saw the split last week i know i should stay away from him but the fact that it is plus value at a number under 70 the fact that it's christian mccaffrey on the san francisco 49ers going up against the arizona cardinals it's so hard for me not to click that button i was wondering if you yeah. feel the same or if you're you have some pushback against it no, I mean, honestly, I think I'm just staying away for now. I want to see how the, the split breaks down uh, for one more game. I mean, you're seeing a juice to the under at 65.5 minus 140. So, to me, that, that indicates that you're getting money being placed on the under already. Um, yeah. So, it's probably a stay away, if anything. Uh, definitely not playing the under at minus 140 juice. No. So, I don't know. I, I'm probably also staying away. I want to hit the over really bad, but I, I know it's probably not the best use. And then, honestly, he's over on reception. Same thing. I, I I really want to hit over four and a half, and I feel like he should be getting five to six receptions a game. But he only had four in the last game against the Chargers in a game script that I felt like was very lucrative to him getting receptions. So this is, for me, Christian McCaffrey, who has been the target of pretty much every player prop video that he's appeared on. It's kind of out right now. So where are you looking to get some value? Yeah, I am I might actually be intrigued by his receiving yards in this game because of how, how bad the Cardinals have been defending running backs in the passing game. Um, they're being 30th in DVOA against position, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, but they definitely allowed some big receiving games to running backs recently. Um, so that would be a, a spot where I might look. Uh, just because even last week he was still heavily involved in the passing game, even though Elijah Mitchell took a lot of carries. So that might be worth a look rather than the rushing yards. Yeah, it's at 35.5 right now uh, on DK at minus 120. But if we head over to lamps.com and use our handy dandy player prop comparison tool, again, shameless plug to check out this page. It is. I think one of the best in the business and you get some player prop recommendations on the page as well from Jacob each and every week. So for receiving yards, you can get over 35 and a half at minus 110 on BetMGM. So if you are going to bet this line, I would do so on BetMGM if it's available in your state, gain it at less juice. I think I'll place a half unit there because I re like I really want to bet on McCaffrey. I think that is the way to go between all of these. The only Cardinal we have right now is James Conner. I don't feel comfortable touching anything of his against this 49ers defense. Any players yeah. we have listed here or not here, Jacob, that you want to talk about? Yeah, Conner's interesting because it's obviously not an ideal matchup uh, against the Niners, but he did get, I think, 21 carries immediately off the injury last week against Rams, and they went ahead and cut, you know, <laughs> you know Benjamin, which was definitely surprising. Um so they're obviously fully committed to James Conner as their workhorse. And, like, to get 47 and a half rushing yards, like, if he gets 20 carries in this game, like, he'll get that regardless of what the matchup is. Um, so you're seeing that juice to the over, minus 140 over 47 and a half rushing yards. Um, that's probably why. And definitely something I'd be interested in. Need to do a little bit more reading on it. But I would say that James Conner on the over rushing yards might be worth a look. That's funny. We, we have... <laughs> the first disagreement from Jacob shooting outside. There's going to be a lot of firsts in this videos. I actually think <laughs> it's under at 47 and a half plus one tenths, a slight value. And that's because it took him 21 attempts to get 69 yards in the last game. I think you're going to look at a, a similar efficiency number against a 49ers defense. And I just do not think the Cardinals are going to have the ball for the time needed to rush him 21 times in this game. I think, he gets closer to like the 13 15 number, which he, he still could hit. But I also at the same time feel like I have a lot of faith in the 49ers defense. It's a it's a no bet for me right now, just because again, that is, I think, 
too much of a heavy reliance on him being very inefficient, not breaking a single rush for, you know, 10, 15 yards to just right. scream that over. Um, but I, I'm too scared at the at the over 47 and a half at the moment. Yeah, I just pulled it up. His two games against the Niners last year, uh, 10 for 29 and then 21 for 96. So, bit of a mixed bag there. Um, yeah. The player, the other player on the Niners I'd be interested in is going to be George Kittle, given the matchup here. Um, he's been pretty in and out in terms of uh, reliability in, rece- in the receiving game. Obviously, one of the better blockers at the tight end position, maybe the best blocker at tight end. But this would be a matchup that would be favorable for him. The Cardinals have not been able to guard tight ends all season. 73 receiving yards a lot per game to tight ends the most in the league. And this has been a matchup that he's exploited in the past, I believe. So I'll pull up his numbers against them. But I think if you want to look at his receiving yards over, that's worth a look. Um, also going to be interested in his touchdown prop that's posted. Yeah, his touchdowns are currently on DK at plus 175. Again, going to head over to our player prop tool because I've seen some other numbers. we got plus 185 on Caesars, and that looks to be the best number at the moment. That might be a better play than even just his receiving yards because then you're locking in um, just all you only need is one play around the goal line for him to be targeted. So I, I think I'll, I'll make that an official play. Probably not my, my only official play on this video. Um, I'll have my, my article out and I'll come back and comment some stuff down below. But I'll, I'll lock in a George Kittle line time touchdown here. So, Jacob, I actually have an official play with <clears throat> George Kittle and I'm glad you brought him up. And it's over 18 and a half longest reception, which. Minus one. There's a lot of juice on DK right now. That's why I keep going back to our player prop tool. Um, You can get this at minus 120 on BetMGM, so slightly better. Um, But Kittle, while he's only hit over 30 or uh, 41 and a half receiving yards in, I believe, three games out of seven that he's played so far, he has hit this longest reception in every single game except for the first game of the season against the Broncos. Um, the way they utilize him and when he does get out there and, and he runs patterns, he's running deep seam routes. He gets tons of yards after the catch. I feel pretty comfortable with this number at, with honestly just two catches in the game and especially against this Arizona defense, which currently ranks according to PFF 15th in tackling. So right there in the middle of the league, but George Kittle's kind of, you know, I, I'm he's, just, his own, he's on beast. He's yeah. his own beast. Yeah. Um, so. No, that, that's a great that's a great shout out. Yeah, I just saw that he said that in each of those last six games. So I'll join you on that one. Um, I like that better than just the overall receiving. I don't know. I get so spooked by this Niners team because they have so many weapons at this point, And, like, you never really know who they're going to use the most in any given game. But I definitely think the longest reception and then the touchdown prop might be the way to go because you're only asking for one specific play for that to happen. I, I love it. We get to hear the sounds of nature in the background. <laughs> Studio. And uh, let's see. Anything else you want to touch on? I think we touched on the two guys that I'm looking at. No, I mean, obviously, we have to wait and see about Kyler Murray versus Colt McCoy. And then if we're getting DeAndre Hopkins in this game, Marquise Brown might be back. So definitely a lot of unknowns in terms of the pass game for the Cardinals. Difficult to play anything there at the moment. Um, you know, I, I might be interested in a Kyler Murray rushing yardage prop if he's going to play because of how good this, this pass coverage is. Like he, there's, there's going to be plays where he drop back, he drops back and there's nothing up. And so he'll scramble out. Um, so it's going to be something I'll be interested in. Got to wait and see what the line is. Though. Yeah. I, actually, I, I have a quick question for you on there. I know you don't have the numbers in front of you. I forgot to look these up. Do you feel like the Niners are going to play more man or zone in this game? Cause if they are going to play man, I would feel pretty comfortable with Kyler's over on rushing, like with their backs turn, he's going to take off quite a bit in this game. Yeah, I don't have that in front of me. Um, I believe the Niners. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't really give me information. That's, that's going to be a comment down below. I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll tackle. There's going to be many more player props in the comment section down below on Monday. Maybe not even morning. By the time you're watching this, we still may not have that comment there because there's so many yeah. unknowns. So you might have to check back before the game. Um, and again, while the odds aren't going to be, you know, maybe you lose some value by waiting that long. Go on lineups.com, use the player prop comparison tool, and I think, honestly, using that tool, I don't stress anymore about, oh, I got to lock in this line early, because 
more times than not, I can find the value that I feel comfortable at with one of the, you know, eight, nine sports books available in most states. Yeah, Obviously, absolutely. that situation changes if you're in New Hampshire, Oregon, or, or Washington, D.C., where there's only one book. I apologize for you guys, but um, mainly for everybody else. <laughs> All right, I think that's going to wrap it up. So, official plays from this video, I'm on Christian McCaffrey over 35 and a half receiving yards at minus 120. Jacob, Kittle, TD, plus 175. You want to do half unit for that one? Sure. All right, and then we're both on George Kittle over 18 and a half longest reception, minus 120 on Bet MGM. And again, we'll comment down below. More player props, I'm going to definitely be eyeing, you know, Kyler Murray rushing, like you mentioned. Maybe, I, I do want to take a look at the passing props uh, once Kyler's comes out and maybe even do a little bit of a parlay with Garoppolo and Kyler. But, God, Shanahan is hard to pin down. All right. Thank you guys for watching. As always, if you like this video, drop a like. If you did not, you dislike. Comment down below your favorite bets. And hit the subscribe button to see more content like this. We'll check out the report card from last week very quickly. And we had... Jalen Hurts under 40 and a half rushing yards at minus 124. Jason, I had AJ Brown over 26 and a half longest reception. Didn't even get that many receiving yards in the game. Mind blown um, for myself. Uh, Curtis Samuel over 42.5 receiving yards for you, Jacob, at plus 100. I don't think he was able to get that yardage yeah. line. Uh, Devontae Smith over four and a half receptions. We all hit on that, so. That was pretty nice, and that was at plus 115 value because we got the over 4.5 number, which popped for basically a second on DraftKings. And then they went back to 3.5 at, like, minus 160. And then Jalen Hurts over 242 passing yards at minus 115 for myself. Bad beat. Jacob, you only had two bets in this game. You still ended up positive because we got such a good number on Devontae Smith. How would you feel about it overall? Yeah, well... Hopefully you were able to follow me on Twitter. I don't, I don't know if I had a chance to come back and comment these down below. So. Um, but I definitely played a couple more things with Devonta Smith, played his anytime touchdown, played him over receiving yards as well, and had a blast watching him have a great game on his birthday. Um, so that was a lot of fun. But I also played Brian Robinson. Um, probably didn't mention it on this video, but hopefully you were able to get that from my articles and whatnot. But um, on the Curtis Samuel play, he I think he got there in terms of uh, scrimmage yards, but not from receiving yards. Yeah. And at plus 100, I, I think that's a play I would make again. Um, I talked about on our, on our video for the Sunday slate that the Eagles are missing Avante Maddox, their slot corner, and that'll be favorable for Paris Campbell. It was favorable for Curtis Samuel. They just, that he wasn't as big of a part of their game plan. They were just running the ball constantly. So I think I'll play that again. Uh, just didn't quite get there. No, yeah, I. I completely agree. I think there's no way that you can look at the game. That, that can, I know it was only four targets, but I believe he got two or three rushing attempts. Maybe one was called back on like a, a penalty or whatever. He was definitely like, let's get him involved. 28 yards at plus 100. You're 14 yards away. He it's basically needed one more target. Um, and yeah. I, I'm with you. I, I really like that one. Obviously, like my AJ Brown hurts props did not play out. And... I'm going to sound crazy. The A.J. Brown one, maybe I don't play again, but I honestly think I play the Jalen Hurts one again. This, he he had a bad game, just straight up. Like, there's some flashes of this in the Detroit game, and obviously last season there's a lot of reasons I wasn't high on Jalen Hurts because of his accuracy, and I think he just had himself a bad game. I mean, honestly, still 65% completion percentage, 17 of 26, but he looked flustered. Nick Sirianni, I feel like, admittedly got outplay called. Uh, on the offensive end, which I feel like doesn't happen very often. And if you play this game, right times, right you, yeah. you know, maybe he figures something out. So I don't hate that play. Um, but obviously the reason we're all on Devontae Smith is it was an insane value. It came through. I hope you guys tailed that one. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Check out the Bane Picks version of this video where we talk about the 49ers and Arizona Cardinals spread total over under and all that good jazz. And we'll see you for the next one very soon.